Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bellphone BF-TD505 DMR UHF Handy Talkie. So we're going to go ahead and get in the box, see what it comes with. We're also going to go over a brief overview of the programming software. We're going to show you how this thing actually performs across the band uh, via power. And I'll give you my final thoughts and review and see if maybe this radio might be right for you. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get this radio out of the box. We'll set these additional accessories aside. So here we have the actual BF-TD505 itself. This is the 400 to 480 megahertz model. We have a battery at 1800 milliamp hour. We have our charging cradle. This radio came with a UK style plug and keep in mind you can get whatever style plug you need for the country that you're planning on exporting and selling these in. We have here our antenna which is a 400 to 480 UHF antenna. Screw that on there. And then finally in the box we have our belt clip and our strap. And as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, I'm not a huge fan of straps myself, but for some people, it may be what they need. So let's go ahead and put this belt clip on. Okay, we got the belt clamp on. Now let's go ahead and put the battery on it. It just slides and clicks into place. Okay, let's go over additional accessories here. You can get yourself an earpiece. You can get yourself a programming cable, which is a USB style. And you can get yourself a speaker mic which is one of my favorite accessories here. So that way you can have this down on your belt and be able to have this up on your shoulder or near your chest and be able to talk on this radio. Additional accessories that are available for this radio are a six charging port, six seater charger. So you can charge up to six radios or batteries at the same time. And that is about it. So next we're gonna go ahead and discuss all the specs and capabilities of this particular radio. Okay, the frequency ranges that are available for the BF-TD505 are VHF 136 to 174 megahertz, UHF 350 to 390 megahertz, UHF 400 to 480 megahertz, and UHF 450 to 520 megahertz. This radio is capable of having up to 64 zones with up to 16 channels in each zone for a total of 1,024 channels. This radio is narrow and wideband channel spacing capable. The power output is four and a half watts on high and one watt on low power. This is a DMR tier two radio and it is also capable of transmitting in FM analog. It has an IP54 rating. It is capable of basic encryption and it has emergency alert functions. It's capable of DMO pseudo trunking, allowing the use of both time slots on a single DMR frequency. And it has digital slash analog dual modes, which receive both analog and digital signals on a single channel and can automatically switch into the needed mode for efficient communications. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and go over the uh, button layout and then go ahead and look at some of the menus and stuff you can do inside the radio. So up top here we have a power slash volume knob. Here we have a 16 position channel knob. On the left side we have a push to talk and two programmable channels with short and long press. Up front we have our menu key, our home key, selection of, on the left and right for the menus, and an up and down key right there. 
We also have a full numerical keypad. Over on this side, we have a programming and peripheral port. So this is where you'd also hook your speaker mic and programming cable or the earpiece right into this spot here. And then we have, of course, our belt clip on back. So let's go ahead and turn this radio on. And so we're in channel one here. This is a DMR channel. So we'll go through our menu here. So in DMR mode, you have your contacts, list, manual dial, and also new contacts you can add. Scanning, I don't have a scan group built at the moment. Zones, you can go in and select whatever zone you wanna go into. SMS, you can come in here and send text messages. You can create new ones, see your inbox, have your presets, hello, and delete all. Here we have our call log, missed, answered, outgoing, and the ability to clear the record. And then finally we have settings. And here we have settings, which is more radio wide style settings, talk around, tone alert, transmit power, backlight, LED indication, Vox, language. And here we have our system info. Battery status, my number, firmware version, and CP version. Okay, and then let's go over to an analog channel, just so you can see the menu differences there. Scanning, zone select, and then settings. Here we have settings. And then we have system info, battery status, my number, firmware version, and CB version. All right, so that's a basic look at the menu system there. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up over on our watt meter and we'll do some power testing. Okay, so here we are, we're all set up on our watt meter. We have our radio and an out of the antenna port, an adapter and cable going into our 200 watt capable watt meter. Keep in mind, this is this may not be very accurate at the low uh, power output that these are putting out, just a disclaimer. And then out of the watt meter, we go from a cable into a 100 watt dummy load. So this is not going out of the, over the air. So let's go ahead and do some testing. Here we are at DMR 400, uh, 400 megahertz on low power. So about 4.4 watts. We'll go to high power and four watts on high. Go close to the middle on our 446. We're gonna go start on low power. And it looks like we're getting about 0.17 on that. High power, 2.4 watts. And here we are on the 480 megahertz, which is the high end of the band. Low power, 0.3 watts. High power, about 2.7 watts. And we'll go back to the middle of the band on analog. Low power, 0.17 watts. And high power, about 2.4 watts. So next we're gonna go ahead and go check out the PC programming software for this radio. Okay, here we are taking a look at the BFTD505 software. So let's just go ahead and run through it and see what we have. So we have our basic information, frequency range, serial number, and firmware version. Then we have in our general settings, device name, ID, repeater ID, you can do a password. We have our basic encryptions. You also have the ability to change the language to English or Chinese. We have our Vox level and delays. Uh, our transmit preamble duration, talk around, hang times. Um, <clears throat> we can disable all the LEDs and decide whether or not you want to see the frequency. Rejecting calls, direct mode. 
uh, menu button disable if you don't want someone to get in there and mess with things. Here we have our tone alerts, disable, voice indication, channel free indication, talk permit indication, and receive low battery interval. And then we have down at the bottom a password if you want to be have a password when you power it up, keep unwanted users out. Then we have our button settings, and here you can see we only have two programmable buttons with up to four different options. Uh, and then you can also change the duration of the button press to get our long press currently set to one second or 1000 milliseconds. And then short press, you can do whatever you'd like there. We have our one touch calling feature. And then here we have our short message where you can type messages out uh, ahead of time and to do a quick select to send text messages uh, over the frequency in case you're saying something a lot, you know, checking in with a post or, uh, you know, just confirming someone's okay or everything's good to go, uh, however you'd like to use that. Then we have our menu settings list here. So our menu hang time, 10 seconds before it'll close out. Um, we have our address list options here. And we have our scan options, call log, and then our utilities. And so these are all the different things you can get in and mess with. <clears throat> then we have our signaling, device disable, remote monitor, and the duration of remote monitor. We have our digital red alert, so you can do a digital alarm. Uh, disabled, we have regular silent or silent with voice, and you can get turn that on to get the radio to trigger an alarm if you meet the requirements. Then we have our address list, and we have obviously digital here, and you can see we just have our simplex channel we created for the video, uh, which is uh, call group 99. So we have our receive group list, and you can see we have simplex over as a member in our receive group. <clears throat> and then we have our channels, so we only have one zone currently in this radio, and here is zone one, and you can see I populated channels one through four with all our testing frequencies that we used, and we'll go ahead and cut straight to here where we actually used to talk over the air, and this is a DMR digital channel, so this is what you will see. It's a relatively simple channel loadout here, uh, nothing out of the ordinary or too much crazy stuff going on here. So no scan list, you got your color code, repeater slot, maybe one or two. You can turn it to receive only if you don't want someone to be able to talk on this channel. Then we have our receive frequencies over here. We got a receive group, and then your emergency alarms. And then you have your transmit frequency, our default address, and then emergency systems, power levels, timeout timers, and then your admit criteria. And then we we'll cut down here to an analog. Also very simple, you know, wideband because we're using it on a ham frequency. Uh, scan list is none, squelch level three. Our receive and then our PL or DPL uh, code there, which we don't have any use in use right now. And then we have our transmit frequency and also our PL, DPL, which we're also not using over here. Uh, and then our timeout timer and busy channel lockout, which is off currently, and your voice close. And then just to show in the drop down, we do also have the ability to do digital compatible analog and analog compatible digital channels. And then we have our scan list. We have our hang time there, so four seconds or 4,000 milliseconds. And then we have our scan list, which I have not populated but you can just add a channel at a time or remove them to get whatever you'd like in there. And so that covers up the general overview of the BFTD505 programming software. So now let's go ahead and get this radio out into the field and do some testing. Okay, so here we are, long range test with the 505. We're gonna go ahead and see what we got here. Radio test one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy? Radio test one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy? Uh, great copy, full, full, uh, quieting audio. Uh, you sound great. How do I copy? How do you copy? 
Uh, great copy, full, full, uh, quieting audio. Uh, you sound great. How do I copy? How do you copy? Uh, yeah, copy you, uh, 10 2. You sound really good. Uh, I think that wraps up DMR. Let's go ahead and try and cut over to analog and see how we do. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy on analog? Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. How do you copy on analog? Uh, really good copy. Just about full quieting. Fully can tell what you're saying with just a a light layer of a static over you. Copy that. I'm uh, receiving good audio from you. There's definitely static noise layer there as well, um, but your audio is clear. So I think that uh, wraps up the testing on this radio. Uh, thanks for the help. Okay, so here we are talking about final thoughts on the BF TD 505 radio. Uh, what I think about it, what I like, what I don't, and maybe if this is right for you or not. So Overall, form and feel, I like the feel of it. It feels pretty good in your hand. Uh, you know, it's not a uh, super high-end Motorola feel to it, but it's definitely a much nicer feeling than like a Baofeng or something that's real cheap. Um, I think that at this price point, it's particularly uh, a nice feel to it. Uh, I like the button layout here, what they did with showing the little squares for the menu key and then an actual little house for the home buttons. Uh, I like that more than the red and green that we see on some of the other models in particular. And then you're just your simple white lines for selection of uh, menu options. Uh, the keypad is nice, has a good little feel to it. The only thing that I don't like is that it seems as if you can send and use it for text messages, but you're unable to program frequencies. So that is something that I don't like. Uh, particularly is that it has a keypad function but it can't actually use the keypad entirely for uh, programming the radio in the field. Uh, on the side here we do have our two programmable buttons uh, one short and one long press for each so up to four options available. Uh, I personally like to have more free options than that uh, so that's one thing that I'm not super fond of. I wish there was more buttons available but on a simple radio like this, you know, that may be all you need or depending on your use case. Um, everything else feels really solid on it. The knobs feel nice and everything. And I do like this little door on the side here that they have for your uh, programming cable and uh, speaker mic and accessories, etc. that you can close up and you get a decent little seal. Um, and this being IP54 waterproof, you're gonna be able to uh, stop, you know, dust and, you know, sprays or splashes of water. So it should be okay in most environments. Obviously, submersion is not an option for this. So try and keep it out of a puddle. Uh, but I do like the form factor. I like the size. It's very small. It fits in your hand nicely um, or would be out of the way on a belt or something like that if you wanted to use speaker mic or in earpiece. Um, but overall, I, I do like the fit and feel of it. As you guys saw on the range test, uh, you know, it worked great at 34 miles. Mind you, that is clear line of sight. Uh, and, uh, but it's still, it's, it's impressive. It was a very stormy day. There was a lot of weather uh, that I would assume would have some impact on this radio's performance. And, and I was still able to make contact within a vehicle um, because it was, like I said, storming pretty bad out. Uh, and, and it did the job. So, uh, if this meets the criteria that you're looking for, uh, I think this is definitely something that's worth checking out. So overall, I do like this radio, uh, and I do think it's a pretty neat, small package that can do quite a bit. So if you guys are interested in learning more about this radio, I've included the link down below for the Bellphone website directly to the page where you can learn about this radio. Uh, I've also included links for all of the uh, stuff that I used in my video, antenna cables, uh, watt meter, etc., all that stuff if you're interested in getting anything like that for yourself. So I think that about wraps up this review. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and I look forward to doing some more radio reviews here coming up real soon. So 
At this point in time, I just like to say thank you for watching and we will catch you on the next one.